What's going on guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I want to show you how you can work with multiple green screen clips in a single scene. And this is something that I have been wanting to do for a while, a lot of people have been asking me about it, uh, but to be honest with you, I didn't quite have a good way of doing it. Things were always a little disorganized, so it took me a little bit of trial and error, but I think I figured out a pretty good system for this. So let's get into it. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that uh, I got this um, building model here and this other little wood platform model from Chuck CG. I think I got it on Gumroad. Uh, you can get these assets for free as a part of a bigger pack, but yeah. Anyway, just want to shout that out. And then the rest of this is just a super simple environment that I made and then I just appended in a little low poly uh, spaceship that I had modeled a little bit ago. So as you can see in this clip here, the first shot is my boot. And then there's another shot that is from the back and the camera is moving up forward like so. And the last shot here uh, took a little bit of work to get right. I had to do a lot of playing with camera angles and stuff. But then you also have this shot from the side where he's knocking on the door. So in order to do this uh, efficiently and with keeping the scene nice and clean, if you look up here to the scene collection, you'll see I have IAP boots, IAP 2, and then IAP 3 and 4th and so on. And if we go up to this folder up here and I open this up, we can see that I have uh, the boots. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that there is the clip with my boot. And I also have a camera and a plane, anything that I know specific to the shot I'm going to need. So if we go ahead and look down at this other one, IAP2, if we turn this one on and we turn off IAP boots, we see over here under IAP2 that this is the footage of me from the back and if I hit the little drop down arrow you'll see that I have a camera in here as well so if I select this camera and click camera we can see the shot composed from this camera's view so basically what I'm doing and if we look at IP3 here is I'm just I'm just putting my images as planes in a particular folder that I can turn on and off with the camera specific to the shot so if I turn off IP2 and I select, you got to select the bottom camera down here or it will keep it on the other camera. This was a scene that didn't make it in, but now you can see I have a whole different shot composed through this camera. And this is just nice because if I need to make an adjustment, I can always turn this off. Say I need to go back to IAP2 and hit the drop down arrow, hit the camera, and now I can start working on this clip. So it's just an easy way of kind of keeping things neat and clean. Now, if you are in a situation where you have like a simulation or something going on that's based for a certain clip, you might want to include that simulation or anything specific to the shot in your folder containing the footage for that shot. And I also real quick want to talk about this fourth shot here. So if I go to IAP4, hit the drop down arrow, select the camera three. And you can also, if you really want to, you could name these cameras. I just left them as it is. It's only four shots. And then I looked at this camera view you'll see that I got this shot here. And this shot took a lot of uh, playing with to get right because originally I had the camera up closer. It just, things didn't look right. Um, I wasn't happy with it. I also rendered this one a few times, but I finally got this shot here. And the thing I like about this shot is that there's almost like multiple layers. So it really helps sell the 3D effect here. You can see I've got uh, the rocks in the, in the very foreground. And then there's this part of this tent, the ropes coming down, then my actor's there you know, interacting with this doorway here. And then behind him is the stairs and the mountain. So it really helps us sell that he's in the environment and part of the 3D effect. And the last thing that I just want to touch on is if I go to shading, and we'll go to rendered mode here, and I change this over from object to world, I just want to point out that you can see here I have uh, two HDRI setups. And this was the original one I had. I just copied it. And then there's some slight changes going on with this. But I wanted to have the option so that if I wanted to revert back to the same HDRI, just maybe with different lightings or settings, I could do so. Um, and I didn't want to have to switch the HDRI. So just having a couple options loaded in that you can always go back to and play with can also be really helpful in getting a good render. So yeah, this is a set. It's really basic, but I'm really happy with the way some of these final shots turned out. I really also like the lighting of this HDRI. You can get this HDRI on the assets. Uh, just go up here to HDRI and then type in desert. And it's this one right here. And it's this one right here by Greg Zal. Hopefully I said that right. 
So it's a really cool HDRI. I love the way it looks. It's really good for lighting your scenes. So just want to point that out. But thanks for watching, guys. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.